Hey there everyone, Hitesh here from LearnCodeOnline.in and in this video we're going to be talking about more stuff on JavaScript. Now first and foremost I would like to mention that my dear friends have patience. Without patience you can never be a good programmer. So when people start with the stuff like variables and loops and all these things, people just are so much eager that they, do, they don't want to focus on these basic concepts, rather they just want to build big stuff. And remember, all these big stuffs are, are built using the small chunks. And these are all the small chunks, like your loops and functions and what are the things we are going to learn here. So we're going to be starting from absolutely scratch. And I expect that by the end of the series, you will be able to do more than a lot of things. And one of that can be a simple example here. Notice on my website here, on my recent videos, I don't push these videos uh, onto my website. They automatically get fetched from my YouTube channel. So this is all done using the core JavaScript. And yes, you can actually do that. That's pretty easy stuff. And even the things like DOM manipulation, this can all be done using the JavaScript. So this is like one of the many examples that we can possibly do with that. But in order to do all of that, what we need to have is a lot of patience. So let's get started and talk about a few fun stuff and basic stuff about JavaScript. So we're going to create a new file in the basics. And here we're going to be creating a new file. And uh, let's just call this as uh, variables.js. I'm keeping all of that as lower. And there we go. Okay, so first of all, we learned about how we can have just a console.log, but now we're going to be moving more further. Now, imagine you have a bank application that you want to design or maybe a game that you want to design. Now, you don't want to just always say strings and all of these things. You might want to store uh, some of the name of the player, maybe uh, some score from the game or something like that. So for that, we require the concept of variables. Now, in JavaScript, the variables are defined using let. Now, the only difference between a variable and constant is variable can vary and constant cannot. Now, we will talk about constant later on, but just to give you a brief idea, constant start with this keyword C-O-N-S-T, const. But we're going to be just talking about the let, which is variable. So what is the variable? Basically, it's a, it's a space in the memory that you say is, hey, reserve it for me. I'm going to put something into it. Now, JavaScript is an amazing language. Like, for example, let's just define a simple variable called it as name. And we're going to keep it really simple. We're going to be using a very simple name, John, here. Now, that's pretty much it. You have declared a variable and you have got into, it, uh, into your variable the name John. Now, JavaScript is a smart language. In some of the other programming languages, you need to mention beforehand that, hey, what kind of value we will be storing in that variable. Now, this is a variable and this is the value. In some languages, if you're storing like a string like this one, John, or if you're storing something like 2, which is a number, or maybe 2.3, which is a float value, yes, we call them as a float if it is a decimal number, then you have to explicitly mention that what kind of value is about to come into my variable. But in JavaScript, you simply don't. It just is smart enough to determine what kind of value is coming up. Now, here is a quick thing that always and always you should keep in mind. So let's just declare another variable, which we are going to call as score. Now, let's just say you make a score of 100. Now, this is not a number here. Now, whenever you put anything inside these uh, codes, then it automatically becomes string. Now, some people like to use the double quotes. That's also fine. But still, this is not a number. This is still a string. Anything inside these codes automatically becomes a string and is translated into the string. Now, if you want to store any number here, like for, for example, 103 is the score, then just directly mention the number without the code. So there we go. You have learned how you can create your very first variable. You have learned how you can reserve some space in the memory and call out whenever you need that. So the good point or the question is how we can use them further. It's really simple. Whenever you want to use it, you just name the variable there. For example, we have learned that we can have console.log. And in here, previously we were saying hello world. Notice this hello here is written inside these single codes. That means we were directly printing this string here. Now, since for this string, we have something which is name, we can directly mention that. And again, notice here, if you're, going to be, if you're going to be mentioning the name here, then it will be printed as directly name because it's a string. You want to print a variable. When you want to do that, you don't write any codes. You just directly say name here. 
Okay, so let's first run this thing and then we're gonna figure out rest of the stuff as well. There's a lot more to discuss. So we're gonna be saying node and then simply the file name variable.js. So there we go, we have got our John being printed on the console. Okay, now the common question is why didn't score print it out? Simply because we never asked it to do so. The question again is, hey, why we didn't use any semicolons. Here we use the semicolons, here we are not using it. What about that? JavaScript is pretty forgivable about using the, co se the semicolons. So even if you don't use them, that's totally fine. That's totally okay, not at all a big deal. In some other programming language, it can be, but here it's just simply fine. Okay, so these are some of the basic stuff. Now, as I was talking about these uh, things, which are code, and let's just say you have 100 here. And let's just say we have one more variable. This is uh, something like um, bonus, maybe. And you got a bonus of, let's just say, 20 points for your user. And what next you want to do is you want to calculate the total score. So let's just say let total score is going to be equal to score plus bonus. There we go. And you're expecting that total score now consists of score plus bonus. So 100 plus 20 is going to be 120. Now notice when I just try to print that out, total score, you're going to be seeing something different because these are not counted as numbers when we have them in the codes. These are string. So notice when I just go ahead something like that and run that command again, notice there is, oops, there's a spelling mistake that I did. I shouldn't have done that. My bad. So there we go. Save that. And now we can run that again. And notice here you're getting a, a really big number here, which is 120. So this is what exactly happens when you have strings. In the strings, they are just concatenated beside each other. But when you want some complex operation being performed, maybe just an addition, then you have to actually use the numbers here. So for example, if I just change back to 100, and this is now 20, now it will give you drastically different result. Just save that and run that again and now you have got 120. So very very big difference between uh, what is considered as number and what is considered as string and this should be the first thing that everybody should understand while learning the programming. Okay so there we go. Let me quickly summarize what we have learned so far and then we are going to move further. We have learned that we have two types of things, the string and the numbers, and obviously numbers can have decimal values as well, that's totally fine too. And we usually call them as float values. Numbers should never be wrapped around in the codes, and uh, we always wrap around uh, in the single codes about the string. If you want to print out the variable name, we just mention that variable name without the codes. If you want to print out exactly the same like John, just like what we did in the hello world, we wrap that around in the single codes. Okay, so there we go, all basic stuff. Now we're gonna be having one more code example here. Let's just say you want to have a name of a person. It's a very common thing in the banking applications that in one form you write your first name, in the second form you write your second name, and then the website prints up your a combination of first name and last name. So let's just do how we can do that. Now let's just assume this is coming up from a form from a website, but we are gonna be holding that into variable. So let's just say we're gonna be calling it as first name. Now notice here one more thing. I'm using a camel casing here, which is a common practice in programming. Now I'm using F as lowercase and N as uppercase. Now I don't need to use that. I can simply say first name, that is also fine. I love to use camel casing, it's, read, it's more readable, that's why I use it. But what I cannot do is I cannot say something like first under first space name and that is going to be something like uh, John. I cannot do that. Variables names cannot have space in them. For sure, if you like, you can have underscore. That's totally fine. But I'm, a, I'm kind of a programmer who likes to use camel casing because it's more readable. Something like total score, that's uh, I have done already. So there we go. We have got our first name as John. Let's just say we have got our last uh, name that is gonna be equal to Doe. Uh, very, very famous people, John Doe and Jane Doe from the programming world. Everybody uses them as a reference and I'm no exception. So how we can concatenate them? Now there are a couple of options how you can go. Let me just walk you through with all of them. So first of all, we're gonna be saying something like uh, console.log and inside in here, I'm gonna say something like this, uh, first name and then I can add a plus here and I can say last name there we go so this is your method one save that and if we run that you will be noticing something strange which is your John Doe is printed but there is no space between them 
because we never said we are going to be having space. So you can add a space here. That's one way of doing the things. Remember in programming, you always have multiple ways of doing the things and probably all of them are correct. Or this is the one way or the second way could be you can add one more string so you can concatenate it. You'll be seeing that quite a lot and just like that. So what we are saying here is this is our one string, which is variable. This is our another string, which holds just space and then the three. So we are basically concatenating three strings here. Imagine John is written here. Just exactly replace this with this guy. This last name is exactly replaced by your dough and the space just prints out there. So there we go. Save that and run that again. And there we go. Just to visualize this example, instead of the space, if we would have something like dash, then it would be replaced by dash. So that's a good visualization of the example. Okay, so there we go. That's nice thing. Uh, that's one way of doing the thing. And there can be another way. Uh, like for example, you can have something like let full name and that is going to be equal to first name and then you can concatenate it with the last name. So exactly the same thing, multiple ways of doing the things. Now, if you want to add more spaces in between them, add one more string here, just like that and can have something like space or maybe dash or anything what you like. Let's just say for some weird reason, I want to have a star, two stars here. That's weird. And what I can do here is I can just have a console.log Oops, and uh, oops, space there. <laughs> console, console dot log, and I can directly mention full name. There we go. So that's it. All of them are exactly same ways, and I can just run this file again, and there we go. We have got John star star do. So there we go. Pretty easy stuff. And this is your very first introduction about variables. So now you might be wondering that, hey, things like score changes all the time. Maybe name is allowed to be changed multiple times. So we should be using this variable quite a lot. And there another thing is uh, something known as the const, which we'll be talking about probably later on. You might be thinking that, hey, constant is like fixed. We cannot change it once it's declared. Like for example, here I have said that the first name is John. I can change that later on. Uh, using this. So you might be wondering, hey, what's the use of constant? And I would say probably more than the variable. And trust me, it's coming up from experience. You might want to use a lot more constant as compared to variable because you might want to uh, set up things fixed. Like for example, your bonus score should be 20 all the time. So you might want to replace that with a constant. When you're opening up a bank account for a person, you want that uh, his PAN ID, PAN card or his uh, probably bank account number should always remain same. So you might want to have a constant there instead of variable. And there are tons of cases like that. Now this brings up the question is how we can change the name here. So let me just walk you through how we can change the name. First and foremost, don't ever, ever redeclare your variable. Don't do this, this something like this. Uh, let first name is equal to be, uh, let's just say Jane. No, it is not at all allowed. And as soon as you'll save this and run that, it is going to give you a lot of errors. This is not allowed because you can only declare a variable once. This is the name for it. We have declared it. That's it. Forget about it. You cannot redeclare it. If you want to change it, just don't use the let. And that's it. As simple as it sounds. And there we go. So this is what we are having. So run that again and it's going to run fine. But things actually change. Uh, when instead of the let you use const. Now const is for constant and it can change things drastically. Right now it doesn't give you any error, but constant simply means once you have declared and set up a value, that's it. That's it. I'm really, really rigid and I'm not going to change anything. So when you run these kinds of things, you again get an error. It simply says, hey, uh, I don't know how to change this. You have said that, hey, it's going to be constant and then you are trying to change it. How is it that possible? So don't just kind of a misguide your program. Don't do that. Uh, if you want to use your variable, declare it as let. And if you want to use it as a constant, be prepared and declare it as a constant. So this is your very first introduction about variables, some constant, some of the quick data types that you should have. Don't worry if it is not much clear. Eventually, when we'll be writing the code, building some applications, things are going to get much more clear. So that's it for this video. 
keep visiting learncodeonline.in and I'm going to surely catch you up in the next video.